Turkish police kills two Kurdish civilians in North Kurdistan. Kurdish people protest the demolition of PKK Girula Cemetery in Yüksekova Hakkari on Friday, 6th of December. After the end of demonstration, protesters would like to read their press statement in the street. But Turkish police forces, without any warning, directly attacked the protesters with tear gas bombs, water cannons and rubber and real ammunition. Police forces used real ammunition and water cannons and tear gas at the pre-funeral demonstration, which organized by the Association of Zapotomi Assistants and Solidarity Families, who lost relatives with the support of the main Kurdish party, BDP, and human rights organizations. Two Kurdish people killed after Turkish police attacked with the real ammunition. All two protesters who were killed by police gunfire are from the same family, an uncle and his nephew. A topsy report confirmed that all two protesters killed by real bullets. According to a topsy report, Mehmet Reşit İşbilir killed by six bullets and other victim Veysel İşbilir killed by two bullets. After that day, thousands of people come together in the street of Yüksekova to protest against killing of two Kurdish people. Shops in the city were closed. Owners of the shops joined the demonstration. Turkish police forces once again violently attacked the demonstrators who were just to protest execution of two Kurdish people. After the funeral demonstrations, Mehmet Reşit İşbilir, Veysel İşbilir, was buried with the massive participation of the people. Turkish government used more and more repression to the protesters who had just expressed their demands on the streets. Kurdish leader Abdullah Hocalan and general president of KJK has expressed their condolences to the family who lost their family member. And they said our people should be cautious against any provocations. The European United Left Nordic Green Left European Parliamentary Group hosts the 10th conference on 4th and 5th of December at the European Parliament with the title of EU Turkey, the Kurds and the Imralı Peace Process. A number of Kurdish, European and Turkish political figures, civil society activists, journalists, academic and politicians from across Turkey, Europe, America, Middle East have participated to the conference. The conference provided rich discussions regarding Kurdish question in Turkey. The peace process, which was initiated by Kurdish leader Abdullah Öcalan, was supported by all the participants. The conference notes that the current peace process is hurtling towards an impasse. The conference hopes that this impasse is overcome soon and that the peace process will be retalivized, recognizing that the peace is a necessary condition for negotiating and for the deepening of democracy for the pupils of Turkey. Member of the Executive Board of Kurdistan National Congress, Zubair Aydar, spoke at the conference and said, A year ago, when the 9th conference commands right here, there was at that time no conditions for any sort of dialogue. On that day, in my speech, I stated that if there is one opportunity for negotiating, the curse will respond in a positive light. This is what happened 22 days after the 9th conference, Turkish Prime Minister Mr. Tayyip Erdogan publicly confirmed that he had been meeting with Mr. Abdullah Öcalan. The draft resolution of the 10th International Conference on EU, Turkey and the Kurds was announced. Here are some of them. The government should introduce legislation that ensure a legal platform and conditions for Mr. Öcalan to create and freely lead his negotiating team and those negotiations must result in a legal and constitutional amendment. On the government of Turkey to introduce such enabling legislation steps as a matter to develop into a stronger democracy. The 2013 EU report states that formal introduction of an announced agreement to legalize the provision of public services in languages other than Turkish, notably Kurdish, as recommended by the Council of Europe's Congress of Local and Regional Authorities.
the existence, identity and culture of the Kurdish people, the right to self-rule and the right to an education in Kurdish at all levels must be constitutionally guaranteed. Similar to many other global experiences, a third party will at some point need to be introduced to the process of dialogue. To make an effort in following and observing the peace process Turkey. To remove the PKK from the list of terrorist organizations, as the PKK is one of the sides of the peace process and a force for the democratization of Turkey. Support the Rojava struggle and search for unified administration between the Kurdish people and other peoples of region. We respect the principle of pupils' right to self-determination and condemn any action that abuses this right. Support the official invitation of the Kurds of Rojava to Geneva too, as the exclusion of the Kurdish people from this conference will ensure the failure of all efforts for solution. The Turkish state has ceased support to Salafis and prevents armed militaries who are continually attacking the people of Rojava from using Turkey as a logistical safe haven. The Turkish state with immediate effect to stop the building of a wall across the border between Turkey and Syria. Noam Chomsky sent a video message to the conference. Here is the full video message from Noam Chomsky. The current Ankara PK negotiations are taking place at a critical moment of uh, contemporary Kurdish history. The borders imposed by the imperial powers are beginning to erode. Now, that's a development that provides new opportunities for Kurds, also uh, considerable threats. Uh, Iraqi Kurdistan has achieved a substantial degree of autonomy, uh, one byproduct of uh, Syria's uh, hideous plug, plunge to suicide is that the Kurdish regions have partially broken free, uh, enough so that uh, the Kurdish uh, PYD just uh, a week ago uh, declared autonomy, of course has close links to the PKK and Ojalan. Uh, this took place after a series of uh, uh, military victories against uh, jihadi forces in the region. Uh, the PYD is likely to seek uh, to establish closer relations with Iraqi Kurdistan, a matter which won't be easy. Uh, leaders of Iraqi Kurdistan, notably uh, uh, uh, Prime, uh, uh, President Masoud Barzani, uh, have uh, joined Turkey in expressing a considerable concern and opposition to the Syrian militias, uh, appears that of Barzani. Ojalan conflict is uh, in process over uh, loyalty of the uh, Kurds of the region. Uh, just two days ago, uh, Prime Minister Barzani, President Barzani uh, of Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, made a historic visit to Turkey, uh, actually to, to meet uh, Prime Minister Erdogan. Undoubtedly, uh, steps are being taken towards establishing closer relations between Iraqi Kurdistan and uh, Turkey uh, crucially includes the two pipelines uh, soon expected to be uh, operating, supplying uh, oil and uh, natural gas from Iraqi Kurdistan to Turkey. Uh, the whole region is in flux. Uh, there are many uncertainties ahead. Uh, there are many uncertainties within Turkey as well. The repression of recent years continues, regrettably, that's reversing uh, encouraging progress in the early years of the millennium. Uh, Turkey remains, for example, the uh, global leader in imprisonment of reporters. Uh, Kurdish rights are, have improved but are very fragile, and there's uh, no clear indication, at least that I'm aware of, uh, uh, indication of progress in the negotiations uh, uh, with uh, Ojalan. Uh, in general, it seems to me a time for caution, uh, both uh, cautious hope, uh, but also care in navigating a 
minefield of conflicting goals and interests, there are opportunities to proceed to address the festering sore of uh, bitter repression of the Kurds and denial of their basic rights for many painful years. There are many obstacles to confront, some internal to Kurdish society, uh, some involving regional and indeed broader international actors. In brief, it's a period of challenges and opportunities, period of dangers and prospects. During the conference, we interviewed some participation of the conference. We firstly interviewed PYD coach Ali Muslim and asked him about the recent development about Geneva 2, which will be held in Geneva on 22nd of January 2013. In, in Geneva, we had some meetings. As you know, everybody was there. And uh, even uh, Mr. Bogdanov uh, representing uh, Russia, as you know. And uh, all, all of them, I mean, all the parties and uh, even Lakhtar al-Brahimi was there. So. Uh, they were meeting with uh, all the people, I think, all the opposition. Um, maybe trying to know what they want. So we met him also. And uh, the coalition was there also, uh, individuals. Uh, uh, there is nothing stable now. We don't know how they are going to <coughs> form these uh, delegations for the opposition and even for the government. So you can consider just reviewing what's going on. And uh, as you know, they could fix the date for the beginning of uh, Geneva, uh, which it was in 22nd of January. So that's all. There is nothing clear yet. Mm, our YPG forces are uh, defending the area, and still there are some fights in some places. Uh, maybe uh, there are some... Uh, villages, still some villages and some places to be liberated. Uh, and uh, there are attacks in uh, Afrin area. And also they uh, have surrounded the uh, Afrin area and embargo. Uh, I mean those uh, uh, Salafist forces. Embargo in two areas, in Kobani and in uh, Afrin. They don't allow even the, the food to go in. They are trying maybe uh, to just uh, make pressure on the people. So this is the, uh, it's not uh, attacking, I mean, they're not attacking because, as you know, they were, uh, they had very hard uh, uh, clashes with the YPG forces before, and so they are keeping, uh, they are not uh, trying to fight, keeping out, just closing the roads and uh, keeping the roads for the food not to come in and uh, trying to make some embargoes. Has the PKK agreed to a ceasefire? We had an interview with Mr. David L. Phillips, who is from no Columbia system. University Institute the for the Study of Human Rights. David Phillips Prime answered Minister our Erdogan questions Erdogan about conference and peace process in Turkey. September. So this is a good conference because there is progress. There is now a ceasefire and there are opportunities for negotiations. But I'm deeply disappointed in Prime Minister Erdogan's response to the ceasefire. He's treated it as a goal in and of itself, instead of entering into serious negotiations about the root causes of conflict. There's really no discussion about constitutional reform, about legal reform, about demobilization and disarmament of the PKK and transforming it into a gendarmerie or a uh, public security force. These are all important issues that have to be addressed if there's going to be sustainable peace. There is no peace process in Turkey. There is peace because the PKK agreed to a ceasefire and a withdrawal of its forces, but there's no process. The only process has been unilateral actions by Prime Minister Erdogan to announce a democracy package on September 30th. These measures uh, were discussed previously. They're too little and too late. There's no negotiation. There's no environment uh, uh, where the stakeholders are dealing with each other through mutual respect. Until there are serious talks underway, 
it's premature to say there is a peace process. Peace is a big step. It creates conditions for a process. But right now, there really is no political dialogue of any meaning. Mr. Phillips also talked about engaging of USA in process, and he pointed out that Mr. Erdogan's position must be legitimizing with a cooperating international action. The United States is actively engaged through its uh, very capable ambassador in Ankara, uh, through its team at the State Department, which is knowledgeable about Turkey. But there is more that the U.S. can do. If the Turkish government is speaking to Abdullah Öcalan, that legitimizes his role and legitimizes the PKK, and there should be a coordinated international action that starts with Erdogan changing his hostile rhetoric towards the PKK, and then the U.S., the EU, and European countries delisting the PKK from its list of foreign terrorist organizations. He answered and commented our questions about Rojava and Syria. If you don't participate in the dialogue, you don't have a voice and your interests aren't heard. The problem in Syria with governance is the over-centralization of power in Damascus. Now is the time to start talking about a new constitutional arrangement that decentralizes power through federal or autonomy arrangements so that minority groups like the Kurds can control their own affairs in the fields of governance and economy and culture. That's the only way that groups in Syria are going to be able to coexist in the future. The ongoing slaughter of civilians in Syria represents a collective failure of the UN Security Council. For sure, Russia and China are the primary culprits for vetoing three resolutions that would have increased pressure on Assad. But all Security Council members are responsible to implement the responsibility to protect and to work towards a political solution to the conflict. There are now plans underway for Geneva too, but fundamentally there can't be sustainable peace in Syria as long as Assad stays in power and his inner circle in Damascus is intact. Emma Sinclair Webb, senior researcher on Human Rights Watch. She commented about a conference and talk about human rights violations in Turkey and North Kurdistan. It's very, very useful to be able to get together and talk over these problems. Dialogue is, of course, the key to any kind of uh, peace process. Uh, wh whichever country in the world you're, we're talking about, I mean, not just uh, in relation to Turkey, dialogue is the essence of attempts to make a peace process. Um, I'm here today basically to talk about human rights problems in Turkey, the continuing human rights problems which affect all of uh, the citizens of Turkey uh, and uh, above all Kurds. Uh, and so that's been my contribution. And share her ideas about current situations well, I mean, in Turkey year, and peace process. This year we've obviously had um, alongside the very important process that began earlier the year with the government, the talks starting between um, the government and uh, Abdullah Öcalan. That was a very important process that began um, and we certainly welcomed it from the point of view of the possibility of furthering rights for all citizens in Turkey, um, Kurds but also all citizens I think more generally. So we thought the peace process we've said we've been on record as saying it's very important for furthering human rights. She remarked the importance uh, of tie-up between Gezi and Kurdish democratic resistance and she Gezi commented protests, over anti-terror law KGK cases, free expression of ideas in Turkey and more. Gezi really showed up uh, how people actually expect more and they expect a different kind of democracy, a deepening of democracy in Turkey and these same aims that the Gezi protesters had, in a sense, I think, tie up with what uh, the Kurds also want, which is a more democratic society in which they're fully recognized, in which their cultural rights are recognized, and the, all the obstacles to political representation are also solved. Because in Turkey, you still have this high election threshold, which prevents uh, minor, minority parties going into parliament. Uh, that's been a fundamental way of restricting political uh, representation um, and you have also a long history of unfair trials, uh, very harsh prosecutions under the anti-terror law, 
which always adversely affects Kurds. And at the moment, you've still got uh, the KCK prosecutions going on, hundreds, hundreds of people, hundreds in prison, thousands on trial, uh, and they're tried not for violent activities, but rather for um, attempting to have political association. So I'm in favor, especially this year with the peace process, this year after the Gezi protests, of the European Union engaging more in Turkey to try to influence a reform agenda in Turkey. A former Turkish police informant accused of instigating the 2007 murder of ethnic Armenian journalist Hrant Dink claimed in court Tuesday that he had warned police of the plot but they failed to act. Erhan Tuncel is being retried in an Istanbul court over the high-profile killing in Turkey's largest city after initially being acquitted of all charges in 2012. Tuncel testified that he had informed the former head of police intelligence, Ramazan Akurek, of the plan to kill Denk, but that his warnings went unheeded on 3rd of December. The case was adjourned until 7th of January. Hrant Denk was gunned down in broad daylight by a teenage Turkish fascist outside the offices of his bilingual weekly newspaper, Agos, in January 2007 in a killing that shocked the country. Dink, Turkey's most prominent ethnic Armenian journalist and a leading member of the tiny community, had incurred the wrath of Turkish nationalists for calling the World War I massacre of Armenians a genocide. <laughs>